Hello, my name is Sean Bland and I'm representing the Alex City Promise page on Facebook. Um, what the goal of the entire page is, is to help individuals during the Alex City election become more familiar with our candidates, what they're doing in the city, and giving them more information about the election forms that are coming up. Um, today I have with me Mark Lamborn. He is running for mayor. Uh, again, in case you just happen not to be uh, awake in Alexander City, the election is August the 23rd. They have a mayoral forum set for August the 8th. And I believe there's a council forum about two or three days later. But, um, you know, I don't know the exact uh, information on that at this point in time. But uh, the format of this particular day today is just basically a nice little conversation. Um, I want to ask the questions that most of the individuals in the city want to ask uh, a mayor one on one. Uh, but I also want people to get to know you. So um, if you're ready, we can go ahead and get started. How's let's, that, Let's Mark? get started, Sean. Uh, the first question, I guess, is why are you running, Mark? I think Ellick City is going in the wrong direction, and we need a change. We need a reorganization. I've studied the, with the council for the last four years, visited with them, went to nearly all their meetings, their budget hearings. I just don't think we're going in the right direction. I think we need a change. So when you say that we need a change, what is it specifically that really has you motivated to get out there and knock on doors and run for mayor? I'm, I'm born and raised here. I've been in business here for 30 years. My livelihood has been from the people of Alexander City, and I think we need to give back to the people who gave to us. I want to see Alex City back in its prime, and I think it will take a while, but it just takes a different path than what we're going now. Okay. Now, you know, a lot of people know you in the city. <laughs> it's not like you're not a fixture of the city. <laughs> You've been here for a while. But for those individuals that don't know you, give us a little bit of your background. Like I said, born and raised in Ellick City, went to school in the Ellick City school system, attended the junior college. Back then it was Ellick City Junior College, which is now CAC. Came a business person in 1985 when I bought my daddy's business from him and established it as an electrical construction firm and we've worked all over the world. It's uh, okay to give a plug for him. Hey, it. it's, the company's Bill's Electric. <laughs> and, uh, but um, I've been involved with the city Chamber of Commerce, I'm past president of the Chamber of Commerce. I've served on the board of directors with the Chamber, worked with Jazz Fest, worked with Main Street downtown. I've served on several boards throughout the state. I presently serve on the Electrical Contractors Board for the state of Alabama. So I've got a little experience around that I think that I can put my background into work as mayor of Alexander City. Now, I know why you've been knocking on doors because I've done that before myself. Usually the person comes to the door and you give them a little 30 second spiel and then they ask you that all infamous question. Why should I vote for you? What is What would you tell that individual if you're standing in their doorway and they ask you why they should vote or why you should vote? I don't believe there's a candidate out there that's been more involved with the city of Alexander City okay. in my lifetime. So I think, you know, that idea, I've worked with them and been willing to give up my time and, and livelihood to help the city of Alexander City and its citizens just gives me one little point that I know that what's going on. Okay. Now, you know, I'm a big vision person. And I think that Alexander City me needs to know that its next leader is vision oriented. Whoever that may be, uh, what is your vision for the city and where the city should go at this point in time? I think in our vision, the first thing you gotta do is have a plan where you're gonna go. I mean, we just can't keep going from year to year to year. So let's let's sit down as the city, not just a group of individuals, but as a city-wide individuals and make us a plan. I, my vision, which is an imagine, is to a very vibrant, diverse city, both 
economically and ethically ran throughout. Everybody's got a true access to city government. We have good utilities, good workforce, a reason for people to come to LXC. Now, you know, there's a whole lot in that vision right there. Uh, you said that you want everyone to have access. What exactly does that mean to you? I think the people of Ellic City should know what's going on in the city of Alexander City. We There's no way our, that we communicate, the city government does, with us as citizens of what's going on. And uh, a real simple example of that is in the city of Auburn gives a monthly newsletter that tells you what's going on in the city, and it's put in with a utility bill. Very simple, nice idea, you get to go. They get to know, they know what it is, they do surveys to find out what the people want. And I think the people should comment on what they want in the city of Ellic City, not just leave it up to the mayor and the council. Hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times people run for positions uh, and they're running for the idea of the position and they don't always know what the position is. What do you know and understand about the position of mayor? Because that's the position that you're... Well, tell me a little something about what you think being mayor is about. The mayor's job is a seven-day, 24-hour position. <laughs> it is a... You are the chairman of the board. The buck stops with you. Every department answers to you. Everybody's problem can end up in your lap. So you have to be willing to be able to serve 24 hours a day, answer phone calls, be on call, be able to be an advocate for the citizens of Alexander City and the employees of Alexander City. Because you've got over 300 people that's working under you. So it's just not a go in at seven and get off at five job. You got to work at it all day long. You're the face of the city. You're the face of the city, along with the, the employees are the face of the city. So okay. you've got to manage them. Okay. Now, you know, I would be wrong as an HR person if I didn't ask you an HR-related uh, question. You know, you have a background. You've given us that. You know the position. How will your background relate to the position of mayor at this point in time? With my background in the electrical construction industry in Alexander City, it has given me the ability to work with most of all of the department heads in some form or fashion. So that gives me a clue to what they already do and how to work with it. So I take my deal of working with those utilities, Alabama Power Company, Allegasco, the, the pipeline, and industries that we've worked with overseas. It gives me a little concept of things that go on in the bigger portion of the world that we could use in Alexander City. Well, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. We're going to start talking a little bit about some of the issues, some of the things that are actually out in Alexander City that most of the voters um, have asked to kind of have the next mm -hmm. people tell them about. Um, be honest with you, one of them is jobs. The other one's economic development. And, of course, with all the stuff that we got going on, finances is probably the third. Now, jobs and economic development – a little bit different and a little separate because of you know jobs is in itself but then the actual economic development piece i believe is a little little bit different um let's let's back up just a bit before we get get into those and let me ask you kind of like a foundational question every city does things well every city does some things that you obviously as a candidate would like to see improved um what are some of the things that you see that the city is doing well that you might would want to jump in and improve on? And then give me an example of some th one, or, one or two things that you would like to see that we are not doing so well right now. The city, one of the main things is the city I think is doing well is in their parks and rec. It's, okay. a, it's a good, good program, got good things going. It's growing. It's being developed. Their utility system is some of the best in the state. I mean, we can't ask for better water, better sewage. It's got to be maintained. It's got to be kept up. So we can't let it go lax. We want to keep our utility rates for power are some of the cheapest around. So, you know, those are good things that we have going on. Our airport is phenomenal. Uh, it is, people just really don't realize how many corporate people fly in to Alexander City 
on a weekly basis, and that is the front door to Alexander City for some major corporations. Okay. Bad things, you know, we've got a bunch of stuff <laughs> that's bothering our town, you know. So until that we... That was well put, by the way. You know, stuff. Yeah. And I got that from a preacher this yeah, week. Okay. So, but uh, you... We've become disjointed in our city hall and in between our department heads. We've got to unify city government back okay. together. Our Between city council, mayor, city government, employees, unless we unify that, we ain't going anywhere else. We don't have to worry about finances because that ain't going to happen. We can't get that straight. We can't get the industrial development till we unify back. Well, kind of sticking with that theme of unifying and getting everybody where they need to be, um, you know, you've been, you've got a business. Uh, how would you say you're, you've been head of a lot of different organizations in the city. How would you say your governing or management style is? Hands on. Okay. hundred percent. Hands on. You've got to surround your people with yourself with good people. The mayor cannot do everything by himself. Okay. So you must surround yourself. A good financial person, great city clerk. The court system's got to be good. Your superintendents have got to be good to run the city as it is. And we're talking about a, a $50 million corporation. It's all surrounding yourself with the best people that you can get. If that doesn't work out, you get a new person. So what can Alexander City expect from you from a leadership and communication style as you, if you were to get into the office of mayor? Leadership, I'll be there to to try to organize, or not to try, we will organize back the city of Ellick City in a corporate structure. Okay. Where we answer from top to bottom. We will, uh, being able to voice our opinions back out to the city, you know, it's an open door policy. You work in, you work with me, or I want, I love to see cities and organizations, corporate structures, you work from the bottom up. You first, you talk to the person in the department head and He's your first call, and you work yourself up. You got a problem, I want to see you. If okay. I'm in the mayor's office and you, the problems cannot be worked out below, I want to get involved. Do you see the city, not just in government, but the city overall as being unified? No, no. It's a big separation in different groups, and it's just not a race issue or wealth issue or anything. LC is divided up in different little neighborhoods. Clicks. And clicks. Okay. And, and back in the older days, it was the mill villages, you know. Right. You had Avondale Village, you had Russell Village, and then you had the people that weren't in between. Well, how would you as mayor try to get less clicks, I guess, or a click, <laughs> a big click? A big click. Instead yeah. of one, or I mean, instead of several clicks. You know, a lot of people don't want to get out of their click. Right. You know, they're satisfied and they're happy right there where they're on the click. That's great. But I also want them to express their feelings to the other click, you know, huh. where okay. we come back as a group and say, hey, what you're doing is working great over here. Now, how can we get it done over here? Let the clicks kind of use their click strengths. That's right. They, they know what works for their people in their little neighborhood. And this could be as far as a little neighborhood that gets to the point that they are a click. And so they can, we can get those groups together. There again, it's the point of getting them to come out and help us as a city to get together and form it. Hmm. That's a unique, that's a unique concept. Let's talk a little, let's switch gears to economic development. Um, what, what do you see your role and your vision and plan for helping the city jumpstart an economic development situation? The mayor, in my opinion, should be the marketing head. If there's a question of somebody might want to be here, don't wait on him to get here. Let's go see them. Okay. Let's present ourselves first. Um, not only industrial, Let's look at commercial and retail and go ahead and get an incentive programs out there for those groups. A good restaurant can employ up to 200 people. And that's a known fact and several restaurants have been going to other communities 
they'll tell you it's 200, 250 employees. That's a small industry in itself, and it just kind of rolls around. So you, you're investing in not only jobs in the industrial world, but jobs in the commercial and retail industry too. Now, you know, many people talk about we need to be the big fish in a small pond sometimes, and, you know, you got the small, you know, grow the small right. fish and all that. What would you say is Alexander City's, what would you go after as mayor of Alexander City? What You know, which, which, like, would it be both of them, or would it be a, uh, you're going after the big fish, or would you go after the small fish? I mean, Personally, what, I would rather have 10 small 50-man yes, employments okay. than I would a 5,000 employee. Okay. Why you know, would that be? Just out why? of your... Because that one big dude shuts down, everybody's gone. Okay. If we have 10 little companies, one of them shut down, we're not hurt so bad. You know, um, for instance, I say that Ellic City is parallel to Fairfield. True. I okay. grew up in, I mean, in that area. All right. So you had U.S. Steel... You had Russell, not only Russell, we had three foundries sh shut down, Russell and Avondale downsized. Right. right. About the same time. Fairfield lost U.S. Steel. Clicked around, got back on the feet, worked real good, lost Walmart. 33% of their income in the city of Fairfield was Walmart. True. You take that much money out of your budget, you collapse. You can't do it. So we have the little industries. We lose one, we're not hurt so bad. We can replace them. We don't ever want to lose a company, but if it happens, I don't want to lose the It's 5, a cyclical 000. thing. You're, in other words, you're hedging your bets going That's right. forward. That's Instead right. of putting all of your uh, eggs in one basket, you're looking at possibly doing several little eggs in a big basket and then just, and if one of them breaks, you still got other eggs in there. And I'd rather want that diversified. Right. Okay. Not in one type of industry. Okay. Um... Now, jobs. You've kind of touched on economic development and jobs, and you've actually done a pretty good job of tying in how the jobs are there. Is it fair to say that, I mean, what do you say as far as helping on our financial end? Because obviously the economic development helps us get out of the financial slash crisis that we're in. How, how, what, what, what would be some of your pet things to kind of tie all of that together? You know, a lot of people don't realize, but most industrial plants built don't pay taxes for 30 years, basically a 30 year program, except the educational tax. They do have to pay educational tax. So when you bring an industry in, you want to get enough people in there working that they're spending their money in your community which is building your sales tax, which is the major portion of how we make income into the city. So you've got to keep them here. You, you know, we all wanted 280 to be, that was going to be the great blessing. 280's four lane from Birmingham to Columbus, Georgia. Also had a bad side. Made it real easy for you to drive to Birmingham or Auburn and go shopping. True, true. Um, it would be wrong of me switching gears on you a little bit. <laughs> it would be wrong of me to not ask you about your take on where we are with the finances of the city right now. Uh, you've heard people talk about doing a forensic audit. You've heard that we have various issues going on with the money side of what we're doing. Um, what do you see as a way of climbing out of our financial woes of the city at this point in time? At this point in time, my opinion is let the people that the city has hired to finish the books, clean them up, get them audited. Now, at that point in time, we should know if we need to do a forensic audit on if there's money missing or whatever. You know, all we do, me and you, is hearsay. The community has hearsay. Oh, we're missing this or that. If the checks when the golf course disappeared, I think something else would have disappeared with it. So we may have a problem there. Are you willing to prosecute? Yes, I am. If they stole it, they prosecute. How do you think the alcohol referendum will affect our budget? I think it, you're going to get some increase in sales. You're seeing that in the communities around Ellic City. 
It will help us in our tourism industry um, that people come here to stay, enjoying the lake, that type of information. So there is some good points and bad points, but looking at the finances from communities outside of the Ellic City uh, limits, we're seeing an increase of tax revenue on Sunday alcohol sales. Now, you know, a lot of the citizens on Facebook, when they did my poll, wanted to know one question. If it hadn't been for bad press in the last four years, Alex City wouldn't have gotten any press. What kind of press should we see in a Lamborn administration? I think instead of calling them for bad things, we ought to be call calling the press down here for every good thing. And that's what they do. There's people out there that call the television stations and tell them, hey, there's, this is going bad. Well, we got to promote and market Alex City that what the good points are, you know, the great farmer's market, the jazz fest, the sun festival, uh, all these good points. We need those cameras on us now. Um, another one of our Facebook people asked the question, what are your plans or what can you see from a diversity standpoint in City Hall? It's not just City Hall. Okay. It's inside the entire city. Okay. Uh, about 6% of the employees of Alexander City are black. Okay. Kind of low, real low. And I don't know what the problem is. I don't know if they didn't apply for the job, couldn't fulfill the requirements or whatever. But I truly feel that we need to increase that to some percentage point where that percentage point it is. But we're going to have to work to, to market, to recruit these people in here, and to give them a, a good place to work. Follow-up to that is um, a lot of individuals in the poll um, wanted to ask, will we see more diversified activities that the city um, puts on and supports, such as Sunfest and Jazz Fest and things of that nature? Um, they claim that a lot of that isn't always a diversified situation. <laughs> you know, I can see their point, but I've also worked on the other side. Okay. And it's hard in Ellick City to bring in the minorities to come in and help organize okay. and work these events. So the people of Ellick City have got to be willing to participate to help. It's fair enough. Um, real quick, are you familiar with budgeting? Yes. All right. What We've, experience have you had with budgeting? You know, I'm a small company. We work a budget every year. We produce things. But I also work with budgets all over the world with government contracts, having to make sure we can get our budgets in to get facilities built, not just for the government. We did a lot of humanitarian projects throughout. And, you know, you really have to be able to know how to work one to get the information. And all of our stuff has to go to Congress. And it takes five years for us to move a project through. So learning how to budget and work with government contracts. Yeah. You got that. Um, well, you know, I guess the last question is more of a personal question for me. Um, what exactly is the first, if you found out today that the election was held, Mark Lamborn is getting ready to take the oath and you get ready to walk into the mayor's office for the first time. What is the first thing that we can expect for Mayor Lamborn to start working on? First thing I, I would like to do is schedule a public employee meeting. Every city employee at one time. Let's sit down. We've got a new game to go. Let's work at it. I would love to reorganize a few areas in the city hall to make them a little bit more business friendly. We don't have business. We don't have city hall. You brought up something that I'm interested in. Will you be working on waste? Yes. Yes. And this waste means a lot of stuff again. Yes, stuff. You know, stuff. that's energy. Right. That's uh, um, manpower. Right. Equipment. All these kind of things that we've got to consolidate, go back and see how the most efficient way to do things are. Well, I guess the last thing going into the end of our interview is... 
if you were to look into the camera today and that person standing right there in front of you and you're about to leave, what would be the last thing you want to say to them as a final pitch for their vote? 2016 is evident. Either stay the same or vote for a change. And I'm asking for your vote for a change. Boy, look at you. That almost was a presidential situation right there. <laughs> uh, Mark, I appreciate you coming, interviewing with us, and taking the time to talk to the people and let them know specifically what's on their mind. Like I said, there are forums and there are a lot of stuff that's happening, but I don't think that we actually have one place that they can go to and actually listen and get to know you. So. I, I appreciate you being brave enough to sit here and let me beat up on you for a few well, seconds. Well, Sean, I appreciate the opportunity, and I think it's great that you're putting this on and you can get it out to the mass people through social media and, uh, and open it up where people who don't have social media, they can get access to it too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this will do it for the segment with Mark Lamborn. Uh, he's running for mayor. Make sure that you watch this as many times as you want to i'm sure he'd appreciate it share it as often as you can uh, but the main thing is become educated and get ready to vote on august the 23rd and ch keep checking our page for alexander city promise for more information